and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 through 10. What's really the problem? Here. This. The human heart. And of course I'm not talking about the muscle that pumps blood through your body constantly. I'm talking about the spiritual center and core of every living, breathing human being on the face of the planet. The human heart is the problem. Why? Because the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and is desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? human heart is the problem. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was traveling uh, after having been released from prison for political reasons and was associating with all kinds of different people. And some of the kinds of people were the kinds of people who put him in jail. And other kinds of people come up, came up and said, why are you associating with them? They're the problem. They're the evil ones, and his response is pitch perfect. The line between good and evil does not, ring, line, it does not run between us and them. It runs right down the center of each one of us. The human heart is the problem. The instant we start blaming them or that or this or the other, and not blaming the actual problem, which is the broken, sinful heart of humanity, we become part of the problem. We become part of the problem. It runs so much deeper than all of the shouting voices and pundits of this world and newscasts and podcasts and Facebook posts and Twitter tweets and Instagram pictures could ever imagine it runs right through the center of each one of us. It runs right through the middle of each one of us. I am the problem. You are the problem. Every one of us are the problem. Stop blaming things that are not the root cause. Politicians who hide emails, people who protest, people who kill cops, people who do this, people who do that, they are not the problem, they are a symptom of the problem. The human heart, yours and mine, that's the problem. Broken, sinful, desperately wicked hearts without God are the problem. And we have cultivated a culture that runs to anything and everything but God for satisfaction, for hope, for justice, for whatever it is that is to scratch whatever itch that I have. And we wonder why we have the massive evil running rampant and building up the kind of steam in our culture that we do. Because we have turned our backs to God as a culture. We have said, no, my way. No, I want it done my way. We are buying into the very first lie. Well, you will be like gods. You'll be in charge of yourself. You need to make your own decisions. It's not about listening to God. It's about listening to your heart. Well, if your heart is broken and desperately wicked, why would listening to that be a good idea? Let us not blame what is not actually the problem. Let us actually zero in with laser precision on, the, on what's the matter. You and me. We are what's the matter. Hearts without God are what is the matter. The world has shown us its inherent madness. But there is one who has already overcome the madness. The world has shown us its inherent madness, but here's the thing, here's the reality, here's the kicker, here's the unshakable truth of the situation that nobody in the news will tell you. There is one 
who has already overcome the madness. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. This is Jesus talking. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Think about that. You turn on the news, you feel overcome. You feel like there's nothing you can do. You feel like there is, it's just hopeless. The reality, the unaddressed elephant in the room is this. There is one who has already overcome. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he is the rightful king and lord of this world. He is in charge. He, through his death and burial and resurrection, has already defeated the problems that we have fretted over this week. Everything that you've worried about, everything that you've wrung your hands over, everything that got under your skin this week, everything that raised the temperature of your anger this week, that has been overcome in Jesus Christ. Amen. You have been rescued from those things. It does not matter if they bust down your door, drag you out in the night, drag you into the street and shoot you or throw you in jail. If you are in Christ Jesus, you have already tasted victory. We do not need to be afraid. I will refer you back to our scripture reading. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage? Why do they plot and scheme? Why do they plot of breaking the bonds of the Lord that he has on them? Why do they say, well, we're going to get away from this God? And what is God's response in Psalm 2? The Lord in heaven laughs. Why does he laugh? Because he's already won. He has already had the victory. He has already triumphed. He is already in charge. There is nothing that any single human being, I don't care how evil, how bad their broken heart is, he is their Lord. And there will come a day, according to the scriptures, when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why are you worried? What are you worried about? Well, this great country of ours, what if it topples? What if it does? Amen. Jesus will still be Lord. Amen. What if my bank account runs out? What if it does? Jesus will still be Lord. Amen. What if I don't have a place to stay? Jesus will still be Lord, and he will still be your Lord, and he still loves you. What if God, what if this, what if that, what if the other? What is that to you? Jesus Christ is still your Lord, and he is still watching over you, and he is still taking care of you, and he is still moving all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. I have overcome the world. I have overcome. Don't you be overcome by this. Don't you submit to this nonsense. Don't you surrender when the newscasters tell you, ooh, things are going to be bad. <laughs> things are completely under his watchful care. Amen. You have nothing. Repeat nothing in the end to completely worry about because God has got this. He is still on his throne, and he still reigns, and he still rules, and you are still in his heart. You are loved. You are loved by the God who rules and reigns for the entire universe, the God who made subatomic particles, and the God who made black holes, and everything in between, who made universes, and who made people who create unicycles, 
God made them all. God has made us all. And he is over all. God reigns. He reigns. What are you worried about? What are you worried about? It is beyond time for the church to be the church. And remember, we are the only ones who have the hope of the world. It is beyond time that we remember who we are in this drama that is unfolding in the universe on this little blue and green planet called Earth that seems to be spinning out of control but in reality is completely held in his hands. We are the church. We are God's idea. God says, I will send my son into the world, and this son will die for this human race. But not only for this human race, but to restore the complete brokenness of all creation. And I will build my church. That's what Jesus says, is it not? When, when Jesus and Peter have this exchange in the scriptures... And Jesus says, well, who, who do people say that I am? Well, some people think that you're this guy and you're that guy. Some think that you might be this prophet. Some people think you're Elijah. Some think that you're John the Baptist come back to life. And Jesus says, fine, okay, great, whatever. Who do you say that I am? And Peter's response is what? You are the Messiah. You are the Christ, Son of the living God. And what is Jesus' response? Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. And I will build my church on this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now just think about that image for a moment. What do gates do? They try to keep things out. Right? Hell is not assaulting us. We are to assault hell. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What it? The church. We charge hell. We dismantle hell. In this world, hell has no place. We are the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his people. We are his body. We are his bride. We are the expression of his presence in the world. Yes, that's what the scripture says about us. We must remember who we are. We are his people. Hell has no chance against that. Why do we cower from it? Why are we afraid of it? There is nothing to fear. Because we are on God's side. It is not that God is on our side. He has his own side, and we get to be a part of it. We are on his side. Can I preach at you? Yes. Yeah. Here's the thing. Hell has no chance. It is defeated already. It is time to tear those gates down and in faith. It is time to remind hell who's in charge, and it's Jesus Christ. It is our Lord and Savior. Why are you afraid this morning? Are you? What is one of the most reiterated commands in the Bible? Don't be afraid. And we need that, don't we? Because that is our like, disposition. We are disposed to be afraid because we don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going to happen, but God does. He knows who's in charge. He is. He knows who wins. He does. He knows who the victor is. Jesus Christ is the victor. He is the one who reigns and rules. He knows who the loser is. Do you know who the loser is in this fight? 
Yeah, that would be Satan. That would be the dark spiritual forces arrayed against God's people. They are the losers. They have lost. Now, they're sore losers. <laughs> Very sore losers. And they will do what they can. They will do what they can against God's people to prevent smaller victories here and there. But here's the thing. They've lost. Don't cower before losers. Don't submit. Don't surrender because they have already lost. We have won. <coughs> what does Jesus say? I have overcome the world. He's overcome email scandals. He's overcome shooters and snipers. He's overcome politicians. He's overcome peasants who think that they are in charge. He's overcome this whole world. He has overcome a system that is arrayed against him. He's already defeated this world. Don't you be overcome. Don't you be afraid. Don't you give in. Our way is different from that of the world. And it's far time, far beyond time for the church to remember who we are. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing so, you will reap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't, this is the key here, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Romans 12, 17 through 21. Don't let evil conquer you. You, but conquer evil by doing good. Evil can be conquered. Evil can be defeated. Evil can be overcome. It is not something to fear. It is not something to quake before. It is something to be attacked with good. Because sometimes our hearts do this thing. And sometimes that thing is... Well, that person did me wrong, and I'm going to do wrong right back to them. Well, that person isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing, so I'm going to go, and I'm going to be the superior one, and I'm going to correct them, and I'm going to tell them what for. I'm going to be the one who's in charge. I'm going to rule the situation because I'm so much better. That is not following this. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. <clears throat> Conquer evil by doing good, which means don't take revenge. Don't seek revenge. And, and the scripture here, if you were to back up, gives us a reason why not to take revenge. Uh, dear friends, do uh, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. Mm -hmm. I will will repay. Is there some injustice? Is there some great horrible thing that is done to you, against you, to undermine you, to make you look foolish, to humiliate you, to make you feel awful? Do not take revenge for that. Why? Because God has that personal slight against you too, and he knows exactly what to do about it. Amen. Have you been wronged? God will take care of that. Nothing is escaping his watch. Nothing. He has this. Have you been slighted? Have you been insulted? God has that. He knows about that. He will take care of that. He has either taken care of it by the application of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, to forgive that person if they have said yes to him, or he will take care of that on the day of his judgment. Nothing goes unaddressed. <coughs> Nothing goes unaddressed. 
absolutely everything from the smallest insult to the greatest global injustice will be addressed by God if it has not all been, already been addressed already. He has this. Now, there are, of course, ways in which God takes care of things in the in-between time. That's why we have things like law enforcement, even when it goes wrong. That's why we have nations. That's why we have people who are in charge. Even when the government is so horribly skewed, that is also God's idea. To keep the rule and order of law. Even when it does it poorly, when it does it at least a little bit right, that's God at work through that broken system. Which is why we have in other places in scripture, passages like this, pray for your leaders and your kings. It is so easy for us, and, and hear, hear me out, it is very easy for us who are Christians, who are followers of Jesus Christ, to look at a politician, to look at the broken system of government and slander it. It's very easy for us to do that. It's very easy for us to put out those memes on Facebook that are funny, that are making fun of the problem. Those don't help. That is not praying for your leaders. That is not supporting those whom God has appointed over us, which Romans 13 says, God is the one who puts Caesar where he is. And if you know anything about Caesar, he was no friend of Christians. Just because a ruler is not in favor of God's people doesn't mean that God is the one who put them there for a purpose. And they are to be prayed for, not ridiculed. Prayed for, prayed over, prayed with. God loves them. And Jesus died for them, too. Just like you are loved, they are loved. They matter to God. Just like you matter to God. Um, the church outlasts everything. I went to a conference at a conference last week. Um, it's one of the things that's, that uh, was said that really stuck with me. In a thousand years, um, Apple computers will not be around. Microsoft will not be around. It's very possible that the United States won't be around. The church will. The church will still be here. Because it is Jesus who has built the church. The church outlasts everything because Jesus has built the church. Not men, not women, not people in their brilliance, but Jesus. The Son of the living God has built the church. So it is important on a number of levels that we remember that. The first level is this. We don't submit to the darkness. We don't surrender to the darkness. Our way is peace, love, and forgiveness, and goodness. We are carriers of peace, love, and goodness. This is who God is in the central core of his being. What does he say in 1 John 4? I, God, am love. Not I have love, I am love. And so his people, us, the church, are characterized by love. We're to be characterized by love. That Romans 12 passage that we just read, do your best to live at peace with everyone. Live at peace with everyone. That is hard. It's so hard. That is our call. We don't get to wiggle out of that because we don't like that other person. We live at peace with them. We don't gripe, we don't complain, we don't whine. We don't post our complaints on Facebook.
Facebook, for heaven's sakes, people, stop it. Stop it. That is not helping anything or anyone. Stop. We are here to love and to bless and to bring about peace and to defeat evil. Why would we contribute to that? Why would we contribute to evil when our call is to the opposite? Stop. Stop. Ooh, there's the social problem and I've got to complain about it. No, you don't. You are here to bless. You are here to love. You are here to bring about peace. You are here to combat evil. Not with evil, but with good. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil by doing good. And I know how easy it is to just click that share button on Facebook, because that, yeah, that, that meme is funny. But it's not helpful. And I am just as guilty of that as many people in this room. And I need to repent. Because it's not for me to have that attitude of those idiots over there. No, I am just as broke. I am just in, as much in need of Jesus as they are. Stop contributing to the problem. Stop. That is not for us. Because Christ has already overcome. He's already overcome. He's already won the victory. He's already planted his flag. He has already risen from the tomb. Uh, mission, missionary um, Leslie Newbegin was once asked, well, when you look at the state of the world, are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? And his response was, I am neither an optimist nor a pessimist. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. I'm not an optimist. I don't look with rosy colored glasses at the world and say, oh, this is going to be good. We just try it a little bit harder. And I do not look with pessimistic eyes at the world. Oh, it's going to hell in a handbasket. No. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Stop it. Both of those things. Stop it. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He reigns. And this world is coming under his rule. Whether it likes it or not, he reigns. He reigns. What are you worried about? What are you so afraid of? If I walk out of this building and get shot by a sniper, I hope not. <laughs> not asking for that one. Christ still reigns. And I am still with him. Though they slay me, still I will worship him. Still I will worship him. I don't care if the government takes over everything. Well, I kind of do care. I don't want it to happen. But if they do, if, every, if it becomes crazy martial law, and they're not going to endorse driving people out in the street, in the middle of the night, Jesus Christ is still my Lord. And those clowns are not. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid. The Lord in heaven laughs at them. Because he's in charge. And they're not. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. What are you so afraid of? The early followers of Jesus knew this. They knew this. What does Jesus say to them? You will have many trials and many sorrows in the world. Many trials and sorrows. Not a few, not periodically. Oh, something bad is going to happen. No, many trials and sorrows. wins. Spoiler alert. He wins. <laughs> he wins. Let's talk about some questions for reflection and an action step. Do you let the world's madness get to you?
Do you feel overcome by politicians, injustice, revenge, and countless angry, shouting voices with no real solution? Does that get under your skin? Does that set you off? Does that make you upset? Does that throw you into a tizzy? Why? Why? Who's really in charge? Who's our king? Who's our king, people? And if we belong to him, if God be for us, who can be against us? How will you be a carrier of peace, love, and goodness this week. How will you do that? Be a, first of all, be a carrier of peace, love, and goodness this week. But how? Think about that. Think about maybe a practical way. Feed somebody. Do good to somebody who insults you. Bless somebody who curses you. Well, that sounds a lot like something Jesus said. Bless those who curse you. Bless them do not curse. Do not take revenge. If you have the opportunity to, abstain from that. Action step. Get on your knees before God. And vow to serve Him only. And then, serve Him. Get on your knees before God. God, you reign. We are yours. We vow to serve you only. Give us the strength we need. Give us the heart we need to serve you. Help us to come under your reign and rule in a way that we are not yet. Help us to not be afraid. Help us to love and to serve you. Help us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to love our enemies and to bless those who curse us. Help us to not take revenge. Help us to be carriers of peace, love, and goodness. Help us to not be conquered by evil, but to conquer evil by doing good. Help us to live at peace with everyone. Help us to pray for our leaders. Help us to lift up the problems to you and not just slander the problem and make it worse. Help us to be your church as you imagine us that we need to be. Help us to come in line with your vision of your people. For the gospel must defeat the gates of hell. 